Hello lovely people, welcome to another book chat, the weekly wrap up of stuff that I've read at some point in my past. I've got four books to talk about this week, I'm just going to dive in. Starting with a book I read on my Kindle. Um, I read The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I read this for my work book club, but we haven't had the meeting yet as of recording, so this is just my thoughts, no one else's. <laughs> Um, the Flat Share is a very sweet romance book. The main concept of The Flat Share is that our two main characters are essentially sharing a room. One of them works nights, so he has the bed uh, in the day. One of them has a 9 to 5 job, so she has the bed at night. The idea is that they will never meet. What happens is they start leaving each other notes and corresponding through notes, and then eventually do end up meeting, and it's essentially following from there. Um, this was a lovely book. It was kind of the right book that I needed to read at the time. I just read like a couple of like heavy things and I was like, you know what would be great? Reading the book club book. And then I read it in a day and it was a lovely time. Um, I will give a little trigger warning thing only because I didn't see this talked about but also I haven't really watched a lot of reviews of this book so people may well be discussing it. I'm not in the know but Abusive relationship does feature quite heavily in this. It's not the relationship that you are rooting for, that's not what it is, but um, there is a character who is recovering from an uh, emotionally abusive relationship and it is something that is given a lot of time in the text. I personally really liked the way it was handled. I felt like it was handled in a way that like gave a, little, a lot of time for that character to really like come to terms with what had happened and other people um, aiding in like understanding boundaries and respecting boundaries and really giving time to like identify what's happened because you know a lot of the time you don't really realize something is as bad as it is until you've already left it that sort of thing um i think it was handled well however i had i have heard hubbub about this book but i hadn't heard any of those details mentioned so i just thought i would mention it because um, if that's something that will um, bring up some stuff for you, it does feature quite prominently. It's not an aspect of the text that would be like glossed over and you can carry on, like it is a big thing in it. So just mentioning. Um, the actual relationship itself, I found it quite sweet. Essentially the two viewpoints are our two main characters. Um, I found the uh, guy's character, uh, Leon, um, weirdly initially reminded me of Bridget Jones' diary and I realised it's because of the way that his narrative is like framed like our um, female main character is um, much like chattier quite verbose like lots of descriptions and stuff like that whereas Leon is like much more like to the point and the way that he writes sometimes um, so instead of like I woke up and made the bed it would be like made bed made breakfast blah it really reminded me of Bridget's diary entries with the way that things are sometimes condensed with a bit of like humor thrown in that was just a thing I had um but yeah I thought this was fun and sweet I feel like I don't have like the hugest amount of like feedback to give on this book but that's just because like I had a fun time reading it I thought the romance was sweet I liked the um sort of um, way that boundaries and stuff were actually talked about I will say um there were a couple of moments towards the end which I was like we've really thrown this in for extra like drama but also like sometimes I read the romance books because I kind of want the like the yearning the misunderstandings blah so there were a couple of moments nearer the end where I was like this didn't really need to happen but it did and I had a fun time reading it and it was a good time I don't read a huge amount of romance books but every now and then I get like a real yearning and this really satisfied the yearning so I had a fun time um, after that is some fantasy. I read Red Wall by Brian Jacks, which is the first book in the Red Wall series. This is a fantasy series. Um, I would say it's aimed towards like younger, like middle grade type kids. Um, and everyone in this is an animal. So Red Wall Abbey is like the little abbey that like mice run, and um, Clunny, the rat, who's a big evil rat, like rides in with his war band and essentially like besieges the abbey. Um, this largely follows like quite a predictable plot of sort of like micro skirmish micro skirmish micro skirmish kind of feels like everything might be getting really really close to being unstoppable and then boom big fight at the end that said that's not a bad thing um the the villains are very villainous the heroes are very heroic it's a very clear-cut fantasy narrative 
What I loved about this is I loved all of the like the descriptions. Number one, I want to eat all of the food in this book. It's like precious and adorable and wonderful. Like bring me the cider and acorns, bring me the wheels of cheese and elderberry wine. It just sounds delightful. But I also liked the way that the descriptions are sort of given in a way that feels very like encompassing all of your senses. Like a lot of the time it's not just like what something looked like, it's like you're incorporating smell, you're incorporating like what are the sounds, what does it feel like, that sort of thing. I really liked all of those like really lush descriptions of things. And I also did enjoy like the actual plot narrative. I, I felt very comfortable with where we were going, but I enjoyed reading it. I think it is a book series which if I had read when I was younger I would have absolutely adored and I think I can see why like this is such a popular series especially with people who read it when they were kids. Um, I will be continuing because I have um, at least one more book in this series and I will be reading it. Um, I'm, I'm not like oh my god this is incredibly nuanced fantasy telling but like I don't always want that. Sometimes I want to read about like mice being cool and then have a little feast which is what it was. <laughs> After that is a book that I absolutely adored. Um, I read Blue Horses by Mary Oliver. I knew I was going to love Mary Oliver because I already loved the poems of hers that I had read and I really wanted to read like a whole collection. I absolutely adored this collection. Mary Oliver has this way of writing poetry which like really makes me feel seen and like soothed and like a lot of these poems really like remind me of my place within things and that like you are connected to all of this world and stuff but also like the world is doing its thing and sometimes yeah you have problems but also like life continuous etc um she has some really gorgeous imagery there's a lot of nature imagery that's going on there's like birds um stuff like that there's also a lot of like oh, i don't know mary oliver like makes me yearn and sometimes I don't know what I'm yearning for, but she both like makes me yearn and soothes my soul all at the same time. And I just, she just gives me loads of emotions and I can't really handle it. I, I love her. And there's like this, this, um, like underlining like kindness and compassion that I feel at the heart of her poetry, which is just like exactly perfect for right now. I just, not every poem within this resonated with me, but enough of the poems resonated that the overall effect of this is just me being like, oh, I feel so soothed and seen and heard and acknowledged and everything. Um, also like some really great stuff to do with like aging in here. I really like reading books that are like um, acknowledging age older women and that sort of stuff. And I know that this is one that she wrote um, later in life. I think she'd been diagnosed with cancer at this point. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I just adored it. I really want to read like her entire collected works and I will definitely be buying more Mary Oliver soon but it just like it got me. I don't know how to go into it in enough detail but like I feel like there's like a kernel within me that is Mary Oliver's poetry and it's blossoming and I'm gonna turn into like a tree or something. I don't know but that's how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> just to end on something else. I also read Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Um, didn't connect with this one as much as with this. <laughs> I think that says something about me. I've been meaning to read this for ages. It was very interesting. It was very interesting to read his, this. This is like a work of like philosophy, but also kind of just like notes that Marcus Aurelius made, like things he was thinking about, that sort of thing. What was interesting is most of the philosophy I've read has been like ancient Greek philosophy. So like comparing like those ancient Greek attitudes with like a Roman attitude was interesting. Um, I ended up thinking a lot about the stuff that he was writing about. There's very much like a emphasis on um, living for now and whether you live to, you might live to 35 years and so and so might live to 70 years, but you both need to live your life to the same extent. You need to not be like, oh, what if I die tomorrow? Oh, what if I live for 72 more years? And just like take your life as it is and live it and live by your principles and stuff like that which was very interesting to think about especially because there's sort of um I don't know like he's like he's like you've got one life that's it but then also him and his words have lived on beyond his death discuss I don't know um there's a lot more philosophy going on in this it's it was interesting to read I don't know if I have particularly like emotionally connected to this but that might 
partly be because I am still like reeling from my Mary Oliver connections so like in comparison no I'm not connecting to the meditations as much but I think maybe I might have connected to the meditations slightly more if I hadn't just read them after like Mary Oliver had like ripped out my entire being so you know that's just where I'm at <laughs> that's everything I want to talk about in this week's book chat. I would love to hear if you have any thoughts on these. I would also really love to hear if there is any poetry that makes you feel like the way that Mary Oliver makes me feel, because I feel like um, there's a lot of poetry that I read and I'm like, that's pretty, but I feel indifferent. Um, and I would love to find more poetry that is like, emotionally gets me, you know? Um, otherwise, I hope you're having the loveliest of days, and I will see you next time for something different.